All right, it is the Ravens favored by three and a half. And, you know, Steve Weiss mentioned this Ravens defense. That's one of the reasons I am taking the Ravens to win 35 to 30. The Chiefs have struggled to protect Patrick Mahomes early this season. The Ravens are the best pass rush. I think that the Chiefs have faced even better than the Chargers, the blitzes they can send at you. And Patrick Mahomes has one throw that traveled more than 20 yards and was completed in the entire season. This is not quite the Chiefs yet. It might have been the greatest throw I've ever seen last week to Tyreek Hill, but I don't think that's enough. I think the Ravens win this game. I completely disagree with you on this one. I'm actually Ooh. going with the upset in this one. I have the Chiefs taking it 27 to 24. I think this is the get right situation. You know, like Andy Reid coming off a bye is something we talk about. Well, Andy Reid with more time, and they've circled this one probably since last season. They knew it was coming. The blitz is coming for Patrick Mahomes, but I think they'll be ready. Mm. Cynthia, I love how Rosie talks about the Ravens D then says they're going to surrender 30 points. <laughs> So that's good is, against look, the Chiefs. That's all you need. That's, that's good against the Chiefs. Look, the thing is, the reason why Mahomes has not been able to get the deep throws is teams are sitting back, keeping everything underneath. The Ravens are going to do this. Going with Baltimore. Ricky Hollywood, what's next? Okay, sorry about that. Well, let's, let's set up the picks. And I'm going to go with the pack on this one. Again, I think their defense is too good, too opportunistic. And this is going to be, believe it or not, in my opinion, a low-scoring game. Hmm. Oh, I like that one. I'm with you on the relatively low-scoring game, but I think that the other team wins, the home team wins. Drew Brees has a nice get-right game. Maybe Traquan Smith steps up and really shows us what he's got in addition to Alvin Kamara. 26-24 for me in this one. Ooh, I've got the exact same score, but not the same team. I've got the Packers on the road. They're happy there's no fans uh, there in New Orleans. And they're happy that Drew Brees is not really that accurate. And if Drew Brees isn't accurate, who is he really? All right, let's get to the picks I I'm going to go with the Seahawks. I uh, I think they're going to win this game by a field goal. They are favored by five in this game. I think it's going to be closer than that because I trust Dak Prescott and the Cowboys to score a lot of points. It might look a lot like the Patriots game where the two teams are going up and down the field. Should be a lot of fun. So I kind of psyched you out with my Ezekiel Elliott pick, but I think he's going to be good for fantasy. I don't think they get the win. 29-25 in part because the Cowboys play calling has not given them the chance to win. They won by luck. That onside kick wasn't supposed to happen. They won by luck, not by their play caller helping them out. That's a math take right there. <laughs> Cynthia, they won because the Falcons' defense absolutely caved and the special teams let the defense off the hook. That's a different story. I'm going with Seattle in this game because I think their run game is finally going to open up because they've done some things in the passing game to make teams plan differently against them. I think Chris Carson could be somebody who could finally get off the schneid in the run game, even though he's been excellent out of the backfield as a receiver. Mm. I think this is the game of the week. The Bills are favored by two and a half in this game. I have the Rams winning. Uh, I think they go to Buffalo. I think they put up a lot of points. Both quarterbacks, I think, can play well. A lot of scoring, not a lot of penalties. That's the story of the NFL in 2020. I'm with you on that one. I have a Rams two-point win on this one. 24 to 22 is where it nets out for me. It's really on the Jared Goff and run game. Of course, if you're playing fantasy, Cam Akers is for sure out, so make sure you adjust accordingly. All right, Hawk, this is where I'm going to gain a game for you because I'm going with the Bills. <laughs> I do think this travel is going to affect the Rams early in this game. And also, you talk about the Bills' defense has been somewhat vulnerable, not against the run. If they can slow down this run running game – and that includes the wide receivers running the ball. The Rams' wide receivers have seven carries. That's going to slow the play action. And that's where Leslie Frazier and Sean McDermott can put the clamps on this Rams offense. So I'm going Buffalo. All right, Ricky Hollywood, what's next? I'm going to start the picks. Because what do the Patriots do defensively to the other team's most effective player? They stop him. And that's Darren Waller for the Raiders. They are going to neutralize the tight end who's been absolutely dynamic that's going to put a lot more pressure on Derek Carr. I like the Pats at home. So the Pats at home are favorites by five and a half points, and I have them winning by seven. I have 27 to 20 in this one. The diversity of Cam in different looks, and we might see that here in a second. That's a good tease. I think that is the difference maker in this one, and that Pats defense is going to look more like the Pats defense we're used to. 
Yeah, I have the Patriots 28-24, so it's a little bit closer. I think this is a game there's just not going to be a lot of possessions. I don't think there's going to be a lot of stops. In a tight one, though, you you got to trust Bill Belichick and his game management situation at home. So I got the Patriots winning. The Falcons uh, are favored by three in this game. I have the Falcons winning by four, 24 to 20 and the injury situation for Atlanta is concerning they have a number of starters out and Julio Jones is expected to be a game time decision but I think Matt Ryan's playing about as well as you can be playing uh, with an 0-2 record their offensive line looks better too so I trust their passing attack. I have the same winner, so I have 24-22, a little closer game. I give that defense a lot of credit. Khalil Mack is going to come cause some problems to Matty Ice, and I think Russell Gage could be a good fantasy play if you're looking for a wide receiver. Yeah, look, I got the Falcons this one as well. Clean sweep. I just think Matt Ryan is going to be too good, and somebody, somebody on that defense is going to make a play. Even so... I am taking the Cincinnati Bengals. I think Joe Burrow is going to do his thing. And believe it or not, A.J. Green, that rust is going to be gone. We're going to see him make some explosive plays. I wanted to take it, but again, I pick with math. So my math has me taking the Eagles in this one. I have a score of 27 to 20. I have Joe Burrow having a great game and my all of my like very, very early math on him, which is it's only two games. That's ridiculously early, but he's starting to have some really good positive trends. So I want to see that continue, but my math has the Eagles. Yeah, I love Joe Burrow. I do not love the Bengals offense. I have the Eagles winning this game 28 to 20. Everything with Burrow is so condensed. He's still last in the league in yards per attempt. He's playing well, but the offensive line and everything else around him is not great. (laughs) Speaking of the Watt house, a lot of Watt's going to be in Pittsburgh this week. The Steelers are favored by four over the Texans. And this is my favorite pick of the week. I have the Steelers winning this game comfortably if the Texans could not protect Uh, in the last couple of weeks against the Chiefs and then the Ravens. You know it's not going to happen against the best pass rush in the league and the best pass rusher in the league, T.J. Watt. I'm with you on it. I have 25-19 in favor of the Steelers. I think a Deontay Johnson touchdown is in the making as well. I'm going with the Steelers. Too much on both lines of scrimmage. The Texans just not strong enough there. All right, guys, let's get to Washington at the Browns. I am take with Cleveland. They've got too much defense up front, and they've got too much Nick Chubb and too much. Why am I back forgetting about Hunt, Kareem Hunt? Sorry about mm. that. Just had a brain fart. <laughs> hey, listen, I think both of those running backs, sometimes people forget how great they are. So I'm not forgetting it. You're not forgetting it. And neither is my math. We've got 26-17 in favor of the Browns. That's where it nets out for me. It's really also maybe about the fact that the Browns defense is getting healthier. So even though Terry McLaurin's been great for fantasy purposes, maybe it'll reconsider it. He's maybe a flex play at best for me this week. Interesting. I got the Browns by six in this game, 24-18. Hopefully Kevin Stefanski doesn't complicate it. This is just a team in Washington. I think you can win the game just by handing the ball off, as Steve said, uh, about 55 times and uh, and then go get your second win of the year. Also looking for their second win, the 49ers heading uh, back to MetLife Stadium. They are favored by three and a half and I've got the upset in this game the Giants winning 20 to 19 you know I know we love Kyle Shanahan at a certain point I think we're taking him for granted everyone thinks you can win with your backup quarterback and your backup running backs and they don't have George Kittle we learned he is going to be out in this game the defensive linemen that they're missing uh, Nick Bosa and D Ford DeForest Buckner's off in Indianapolis players matter I got the uh, the Giants in an upset So I still have the Niners winning this one. I have 24-19 in this. I have the Jarek McKinnon situation because, you know, it's really good of Kyle Shanahan to figure out how these running backs all work, and he knows how to work with Nick Mullen too. So I think that you're going to see a great situation where it's a very slow-paced game, but the Niners take it. I'm going with the Niners also. Nick Mullen is much better than people give him credit for. And, Greg, you hit it right on the head. Sometimes players win games. Giants simply do not have any. All right, let's go. Titans and Vikings. Titans are for real people. There's a guy named Jonu Smith who plays tight end down there that people might want to take notice of. He is getting it done. They're not running the ball yet like they will. Ryan Tannehill is also getting it done. The Vikings, on both sides of the ball, they got issues. Yeah, one of those issues is that their cornerbacks aren't playing. Mike Hughes, Cam Dancer, they're not going to be playing, which is why I have Titans 24, Vikings 
21. I don't think this Vikings defense is very Mike Zimmer-like. I mean, what, he's been top 15 since 2007 when he was Atlanta's defensive coordinator. This is not the Vikings defense we're used to, and the Titans roll. Mm. I've got the same margin, Titans by three in this game. You mentioned Johnny Smith, Steve. I mean, he is a graduate of uh, one of my segments, a sneaky good player in the league. And you know what? They're going to protect Ryan Tannehill. He's going to have all the time in the world that the Vikings pass rush is really not getting it done. Ne neither is the Panthers pass rush. That's our next game. Carolina heading to face Justin Herbert and the Chargers. The Chargers getting some love favored by six and a half. I have the Chargers winning this game a little tighter score than that, but ultimately I think their running game and what Herbert showed last week's enough. I think they get the win. I have seven points, 26 to 19. It may be good to breathe like a Panther. It is not great to be a Panthers defense when you're facing Justin Herbert and you don't even know what you have on tape. Great game for Keenan Allen forecasted for me. Yeah, I am going right here with the Chargers as well. Here's a name to keep in, keep remembering. Jerry Tillery, the Chargers defensive tackle, second year player. He has been absolutely outstanding. He's gonna be all over Teddy Bridgewater. All right, guys, let's go to the Jets at Colts. Um, Colts, next. Yeah, <laughs> I have 26-19 in this one. Yeah, this is not, this is not a, I'm sorry, yeah, 26-17 in this one, my apologies. It's a little concerning to see when you have this Jets offense that is struggling to get going and the Colts defense, which is pretty much the best in the league. So let's, we'll, just, we'll just leave it at that. Wow, a lot of love for the Colts uh, defense there, but you got a close game. I don't. It's, I have it being 26-13, uh, the Colts winning, and I, I'd be surprised if it's even that close, to be honest, because the Jets are missing all the receivers. It, it is tough. Uh, to watch the Jets right now. So let's just move on to the Bucks and the Broncos. I think this could be a, a fun game. The the Bucks are favored by five and a half, but I'll tell you what, Vic Fangio, he keeps these games close. And I think it's gonna be close. I think the Bucks win 23 to 21. Their defense in Denver always plays hard. And I'll tell you what, Jeff Driscoll made some plays last week. If you just didn't know who that was, he made some plays when he came in against Pittsburgh. He's all right as a backup quarterback. Okay, so I have Buccaneers 24, Broncos 19. Jeff Driscoll uses his legs a lot. Todd Bowles stops people from using their run game a lot. So it's not a good matchup from that standpoint for me. But I think, you know, 24-19, still entertaining. I like Greg carrying the French theme we started the show off with into the Vic Fangio pronunciation right there. <laughs> but this is going to be a very, very tough game. I like the Buccaneers to win it, but the Broncos, they play tough with a whole lot of heart. They just do not have enough weapons all right let's get to the lions at the cardinals think back to week one last year the lions started the trend that continues this season blowing a double digit lead the cardinals rallied 24 points in the second half in overtime to tie it to give matt patricia his only tie i got the cardinals continuing to roll mm. me too 28 17 or 28 21 could be even bigger this is just my homage to something good Lions because I feel like I don't have a lot of things to say that are good. But I think Kyler Murray will be great. I think Kenyon Drake will have his best game of the season. So play all of them and DeAndre Hopkins. And by the way, Christian Kirk not playing. So, you know, don't play him in fantasy because he's not playing. I'm starting to worry about worry about Cynthia and her model. It almost it's like a self-hating Lions fan model. I do have the Cardinals winning too. I do have it being closer, 30 to 28. I mean the Lions, they like to, you know, bring you in and then they like to break your heart. I think that's what's gonna happen in this one, Cynthia.